Have you ever read like the Wikipedia for He Man? No. <laughs> it, it must be amazing. It, Skeletor's his uncle. Oh no! Yeah, and uh, he, he's not an actual skeleton. His face was burned off by dark magic. So he's just a dude with his skull exposed. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that information. <laughs> Oh, welcome to Cartridge Base Radio. How you doing, Brad? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Not bad. Um, that's Brad. I'm Donald. Somehow Brad got said twice again. Awesome. Yes. Uh, so we've managed to say my name twice and Cartridge Based Radio only once up to just now. We should uh, say Cartridge Based Radio again. Yes. Did you you want to do that? Yeah, we should we should definitely talk about our podcast, which is called Cartridge Based Radio. Uh, and you can find it on Facebook if you look for Cartridge Based Radio on Facebook. And on iTunes and Google Play, SoundCloud. Now, what is it What is it on those sites? Uh, if you just search the podcast section for Cartridge Based Radio, it will pop up. Okay. Three words. Uh, gateway to magic. Yes. Chances are, if you're listening to this, you know that. So maybe tell your friends all this information. Are we doing an ad for our own show at the top of the show? <laughs> we are. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you stick around to the end of the show, we'll tell you our email address where you can send us just lovely love letters. Like, we love you guys so much. Want to give you a kiss on the lips. <laughs> yeah, let's tease that. Stick around and listen to the whole episode <laughs> so you can get our email address. Don't skip to the end to get the email address. We got a whole lot of show between them. <laughs> So, Brad, it is hockey playoffs right now. Yes, which uh, living where I live is pretty much the only time to really be able to watch hockey. Um, you get it. There's a game of the week on NBC Sports, but when you're watching a different team every week and it's only one day a week, it kind of you don't really get into the flow of things. So it's not till playoff time really comes around that it really feels like a real season. Uh, so it's an exciting time. Being the number one sports podcast on the internet that we are, uh, we're going to talk about sports. Yes. Video sports. Yes. But not like that lame thing where people play, you know, uh, games online and then Deadspin writes about it for some stupid reason. That's esports. Yeah, that's garbage is what that is. I mean, we could have a whole show on that because I could argue you, but we're talking, we're going to talk about video hockey. Yes. Um, In its classic form. And the, the thing that we wanted to try to find out for ourselves is what is the best classic hockey game? So we kind of went through the list and narrowed it down to four games. And those four were ice hockey for the NES, just plain old ice hockey. It was released by Nintendo. Then there was Blades of Steel, which was also on the NES, and it was a popular arcade game as well. There's NHL 94 for the Sega Genesis, which is widely regarded as the best of that series. But really, most of the games are fairly similar. So when you're talking about NHL 94, you're kind of talking about the series as a whole. And then the fourth is kind of a wild card is a little known PC game called Face Off that was pretty innovative for its time. Um, kind of a neat game. Really, probably up there with Blades of Steel for its emphasis on violence. So that's nice. Uh, my children were watching me play some of these, and my daughter asked me, Why did the people punch each other so much? I was like, That's hockey, sweetie. <laughs> So, uh, I want to hear your list of how you ranked these classics. Um, all right. I played through all of them again, and I think probably I liked them all. There wasn't really a bad one in, in this grouping. I think my least favorite of the four was Ice Hockey, and that was followed by Face Off, 
and then Blades of Steel, and then NHL 94. Um, so that was kind of how I ranked them. I put NHL 94 at the top, which, from what we yeah. discussed before, we both knew that was going to happen. And then I put Face Off for the PC after that. Okay. Uh, it won on graphic prowess. It's still a pretty, pretty game. Blades of Steel is not still a pretty, pretty game. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I put Blades of Steel at the end. Uh, Ice Hockey by Nintendo is right after Face Off for the PC. I thought that one held up better. Um, Blades of Steel is very fast. And I don't know if that was a... Um... Okay, behind the curtain, we emulate some of these games. <laughs> My word! No, you emulate some of these games. I am I'm 100% legit. So I'm not sure if the emulator was running the game a little fast, but I straight up could not keep track of what was going on in Blades of Steel. It's like, I know how to get into a fight and punch a dude, but for the rest of it... it was... I had no idea what was going on. So I don't remember Blades of Steel being like that. Maybe I'm just getting old and <laughs> have poor reflexes. It talked. That was pretty cool. It's like... It, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really weird because of all the hockey phrases that you would think they might try to digitize and put into a game. They went with saying, with the pass, every time you pass the puck. Like, not he shoots, he scores for a goal or, you know, goal or anything. Just every time you pass, with the pass. The, and I think that is it. That's not how he says it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I think Slippy Toad is actually doing play-by-play, -play, and he only cares about passing. I mean, he Kind of seems like a guy who would just care about <laughs> passing. It's like a goal. Oh, man, that is lame. A pass, a pass. <laughs> man, there is so much passing. This is the best game. And the best part is it won't say that until you complete the pass, which makes sense because half the time he just passes in some random direction. It looks like he just you know went crazy and lost the puck. But it is kind of weird that, like, after the guy that you passed to is already skating away with the puck, then it's like, with the pass. It's like, yeah, like 10 seconds ago. What if it gets intercepted? Is that still counted as a pass by Slippy Toad? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the one really cool thing about Blades of Steel in the arcade version is that the control was set up so that you'd have a joystick... And a shoot button and a pass button that were, you know, like normal arcade buttons. And then a gigantic blinking fight button that would flash anytime that you were eligible to fight. You just smash it and a fight would break out. And, okay. Uh, yeah. I like this. Yeah, it was great. I never saw Blades of Steel in the arcade. Uh, it was like an NES phenomenon to me only. Okay. So... I really enjoyed Blades of Steel in the past, so I don't know if this is a case of younger me just being enthusiastic about I'm playing hockey on an NES, or, like I said, me who's emulating and you in the purest of the cartridge for every single game. Oh, absolutely, yes. That um, That is exactly what I'm doing. I My friend ran a game store for several years, and he lent me all his games. <laughs> <laughs> yes hey brad borrow all my games <laughs> thank you i hear you're doing a podcast just hang on to this my prized possessions for several years so ice hockey for nes i thought it was hilarious because i was u.s versus canada and it's got a very like a unique art style with like the big chubby guy he skates slow and the skinny guy is just lightning fast but for some reason, whoever you're controlling, the goalie follows your actions, which causes serious problems when you're trying to get the puck from someone. Oh. And it causes your goalie to move out of the way. Yeah. And then, and also the computer kept starting fights with me, <laughs> and I kept getting sent to the penalty box. <laughs> well, that's because you kept losing the fight. Um, one thing that all these games, except for NHL 94, have in common are that you're penalized for losing the fight. And face-off actually goes as far as to... That's the name of the penalty. Like, you'll see your guy get skated off to the penalty box. It'll say, two-minute penalty, not winning the fight. 
<laughs> which is just great. Hockey in the 80s was different, wasn't it? But yeah, Blades of Steel and Ice Hockey both have this thing where you're controlling the goalie while you're also controlling your player. And to a lesser extent, at least with Blades of Steel, maybe not with Ice Hockey, you're also kind of controlling all your teammates. It gets really hard because you might need to move the goalie up or back in the crease or up or down, but you need your player to do the exact opposite of that. And it's difficult. And the the crease on ice hockey for NES is huge. Yes. And it's a square for some reason. <laughs> That's not hockey. <laughs> and man, they skate right into the crease and they shoot it right into the net. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're That's- merciless. This is against the rules, Canada. I thought you were nice. This, uh, I think this was before they established the video game rule. The goalies are just like monsters that annihilate anything that comes in their crease. Yeah, um, NHL 94, the opposing goalie. I, I played this game a lot when I was growing up, when we had the Genesis. And I got really good at scoring, but that was... Several decades ago, and the goalie completely smashed me this last couple days of playing NHL 94. I think I got one goal on, and I was pretty proud of myself, and the score ended up being like 10 to 1, but I counted it as a moral victory. I I can understand the not scoring. How did you give up 10 goals to the computer in NHL 94? I don't know. My goalie was like, never mind. I'm going to just skate out of the... I'm like, come on. What? Their goalie is just all over the place blocking everything. And mine's like, I don't know. He's off signing an autograph in the middle of the game. Uh, maybe I pulled the goalie. There was a guy in the net, but maybe he mentally checked out. <laughs> I uh I gave up a breakaway to the computer in one game NHL 94 and he skated down the ice and he skated down to my goal and he just kind of stopped and waited for the rest of my defensemen to catch up and annihilate him. What I will say from playing <laughs> NHL 94 is video game AI has come a long ways since the day of the Genesis. Um, some people did something real... Well, would do some stuff that was just real stupid in that game that made it hard to play. Like, your linemen, my linemen just left at one point. They're like, no, nah, yeah. you got it. So I'm up there all by myself with everybody. I don't know where my team is. Maybe they're signing autographs against the glass, too. I don't know. <laughs> uh, one thing that game kind of does to cheat a little bit, and um, it... I think it's part of why people like that one better than some of the later ones in the series. But the defenseman, when you're on the attack, your defenseman will still stay way back in their own end. When when you're defending, your forwards will also not come and join the defensive play. They'll hang out at the center. So it's really like three on three all the time. It'll be like the three forwards versus the center and the two defensemen. Everybody else hangs back. And I'm pretty sure that's because they didn't program them well enough that they would get back on their own, so it would just turn into a bunch of breakaways otherwise. Um, But it does, it frees things up a little bit. You know, you go from NHL 94 to NHL 95, where they did kind of take care of that. And it's a lot more crowded because you're, it's five on five in the zone instead of three on three. Yeah. Uh, 94 arguably is the pinnacle of the. 16-bit Genesis NHL era. Yeah. Um, 95 had its issues. And then I think I played the All-Star after that. I don't know if I played 96. Uh, 96, they switched to a new engine, and it didn't control super well. It was kind of messed up. Uh, if you go, If you play a game in 94 and then you immediately play a game in 95... They're similar, but the control in 94 is probably a little bit tighter, Um, which is weird because it's the same engine, I think. It doesn't look that much different. They touched up the graphics a little, but it doesn't look like they redid the whole thing. But it it is a little bit looser in control, and 
a lot more crowded in the offensive zone. Uh, speaking of graphics, uh, let's yeah. loop back to Blades of Steel. Sure. And the fight yes. animation where it looks like two topless guys with helmets on punching each other. Brad, why are those two men look topless? Um, I guess that was an artistic decision. Maybe it was done to uh, to appeal to female gamers. You know, like, programmers didn't really know what they were doing back then. They're like, is this what girls like? Maybe. Uh, maybe it's following the rules of female armor in fantasy games and the less clothing, the higher armor class. So... Like, oh no, this jersey actually causes me to get damaged more. I'm going to throw it off and my pads and my gloves. Let's have a fight. Now, there is a fighting technique that has actually been banned since, but around the time that these games came out, it would have made sense that if uh, if you're in a fight and the other guy grabs your jersey, you kind of duck out of it. And then you're fighting topless. Uh, the Sabres had a guy, Rob Ray, who kind of, it was almost like his trademark move. Uh, and he'd fight topless a lot, which sounds insane, taken out of context. But yes, Rob Ray, topless <laughs> fighter. Um, and, but that was his move. And then they, they would actually, they passed a rule where there's a strap inside the jersey that holds the pads to the hockey pants that you can't just slip out of your jersey. Uh, which is a safety thing, because if you're not real good at snaking out of the jersey, you usually just get it pulled over your head, and then you get the daylights beaten out of you. I think the problem was all the singles that got thrown onto the ice. It was hard to skate after that, because you know he was so good at stripping that the fans just had to throw dollar bills down there. Well, it was Buffalo, so they threw quarters. And that's even more of a hazard. That could hurt mid-game, just getting pegged with a quarter. That actually, that that's a real thing that would happen. Uh, not in the fight so much, but because it was the Sabres, they'd get into the playoffs, and then they'd be in an elimination game. They'd be trailing by like four goals with a couple minutes left. You knew the game was over, and the fans would just start throwing change on the ice, uh, which was terrible. It's really hard to pick up, and you can't skate on it. And that just that just drew out the suffering of getting knocked out of the playoffs because the last five minutes would take about half an hour. So just about every time we meet, you tell us a little about Buffalo. Um, you don't make it sound like the greatest place on earth. It, if you like having your heart ripped out through your chest, follow some Buffalo sports teams because it is just – what you get is like – 10 years of misery where you're not even close. You're getting knocked out in the first round of the playoffs. Or you're not even making the playoffs. You're the worst team in the league. Followed by an unexpected run to the championship where you lose in an agonizing fashion. So how many sports teams are in Buffalo? There are two. There's the Bills and the Sabres. The Bills play football and the Sabres play hockey. And each one is gut-wrenching to watch in their own unique way. Uh, the best Sabres team I ever saw was about 10 years ago, and they didn't even get to the finals. They got to the conference finals. They are playing Carolina, which is – anyway, um, they were playing Carolina, and they were doing well, and all their defensemen got hurt. All I mean, just the, – there's injuries in hockey, but – and there's injuries in the playoffs, but – Never where it's just all all your guys that play the same position all got hurt. Um, the day of Game 7, their best defenseman got a staff infection, which, yeah, I mean, that doesn't happen. They almost died. And, and uh, yeah, we lost by, like, I think we lost by two, but one of the goals came really late. So we essentially lost by a goal. So... Being a Sabres fan is a lot like playing Oregon Trail. You're just waiting for one of them to get dysentery. <laughs> you, you're just you, you got your fingers crossed. You're you're all the way to the mountains. It's looking like you might pull it off, and then it just all goes wrong. Your goalie died fording the river. <laughs> yeah. Like why was he even in the river? <laughs> I like an expansion team. I didn't actually have an official team until I lived for, in Tennessee for a while and a lot of people like oh the Predators an expansion team 
you're not a real hockey fan. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I don't want to talk to you anyway. <laughs> hockey fans are great because these expansion teams have all been around for close to 20 years now for the newest ones. And we're still like, that's not a real team. <laughs> Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> they even I, have ice down there. Like, oh, you you like Pittsburgh. Please tell me how my team sucks. <laughs> you like Boston. You yes, you may win Stanley Cups, but your team still sucks. I, there's uh, maybe four teams this year they're celebrating their 50th anniversary and I'm sure, like, Rangers and Maple Leafs fans look at them like, those aren't real teams. They've only been around since the 60s. St. Louis. Who who watches hockey in St. Louis? I had uh, someone making fun of me for, like, an expansion team, and uh, he liked uh, New York the Islanders. And <laughs> that's just a whole other bag of worms. <laughs> but I was like, oh, so you like one of the ancient teams. Like the old men teams, and he did not take kindly to this and told me about their great legacy. <laughs> and and I was like, so are they like the Rangers? <laughs> I know they're not like the Rangers, but you ask questions like that to an Islander and you just watch their eyes go bloodshot? Because they really love their team, even though their team does not love them back. <laughs> um... My favorite story about the New York Islanders is that I had a friend who went out to Long Island for a trip and he liked hockey and he's like, oh, well, I'll go see an Islanders game. It's not too expensive. And this is when the Islanders were really bad, which means it was any time other than 1980 through 1984. Um, but this was when they were especially bad, like worst team in the league bad. And he went to the game and they... According to him, it's probably exaggerated a little bit, but this sounds pretty credible. The only people at the game were Ranger fans. They weren't playing the Rangers, but it was New York Rangers fans just went to cheer for whoever the Islanders were playing and then to cheer loudly whenever the Rangers came up on the out-of-town scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, they went to cheer for Calgary or whatever and to cheer for the Rangers when they popped up on the scoreboard. Oh, nice. Uh this is uh, one fun hockey story. Um, the strike. You remember that thing when hockey was starting to get popular and then they're like, no, we're on strike. And it's... Which time? Uh, <laughs> the, where they lost a whole season or where they only lost half a season? This would be the whole season. Yeah. Um, we decided to go watch because the, the arena in Nashville, they still had... They like were actually bringing minor teams in. Just yeah. so they had something to fill the schedule. And yeah. they brought in some team from who knows where. <clears throat> and it was really weird. Everyone on this minor team had the same names as Nashville Predator players. Because the Nashville Predator players were just on this minor league team. <laughs> wow. And it was the most brutal thing you ever saw because they were actually playing a real minor league team. <laughs> And they just wrecked them so hard. It was one of the best hockey games I ever saw in my life. Because it's just that one-sided fight where you're cheering for the good guys and the villains are in at idiots. <laughs> and then, uh, then the strike ended and hockey never recovered. Nashville had to go back to playing other NHL teams, and it just wasn't the same. No, when they weren't playing some 16-year-old who just does this after school, it's mm. not the same. You know, honestly, out of all the teams that the NHL added in the 90s, either through expansion or through relocation, I think Nashville is one of the ones that people consider a little more legitimate. Uh, real good fans down there. The team's been moderately successful. Um, so Nashville's not such a bad one. You know, San Jose is probably the model for added teams catching on. You know, they've had a, a lot of success on the ice. They've had really good fan support. Would you like to know the secret to an expansion team doing well? Cheap beer? That and 
a badass logo. That helps too. You got a shark eating a stick, and people are like, <laughs> "Yeah, I get behind that." And the predator is like, "It is a saber tooth tiger. I will gladly wear that on my chest." <laughs> and then you got the jazz. That uh, yeah, that's that's basketball. The, the Utah Jazz. Yeah, their logo. No one likes the Utah Jazz. It's a music note. Like <laughs> no one wants to wear that. They want to wear fierce animals. <laughs> I was trying to think of an expansion team with a bad logo. The Minnesota Wild. Oh, there um, we go. But the Jazz, yeah. for some reason, when anyone says bad logo design, that is just the forefront of my mind is their logo. Yeah. Actually, you know who's got a terrible logo is the Columbus Blue Jackets. And it's a shame because another... You know, another newer team, but good fans. Um, you know, kind of one of the ones that I think old NHL fans would take more seriously, except that they're, I don't even know what their logo is. It's like a thing. <laughs> it's like a star, I think. It It should just be like a hornet, but blue. Uh, I guess the name is because they manufactured Civil War uniforms there. Which is kind of weird because if you ever talk to anybody from Ohio, they think they're a Confederate state. You can just go through Ohio and count all the Confederate flags and stickers of Kelvin peeing on various things. And you'll think you're in Georgia, <laughs> but you're actually in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Kelvin peeing on things is the staple of the South. I believe that's actually the Ohio state flag is just Kelvin peeing on a little pitcher of Pennsylvania. I thought about making a sticker line of Calvin peeing on Calvin and just folding the universe in on itself. <laughs> I just about killed you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. that That's my favorite new thing. I mean, I was going to talk about how much I like when Calvin's just peeing on basic concepts that they can't actually draw. So it's just like the word, like work. <laughs> and that's pretty great. But no, Kelvin peeing on Kelvin peeing on Kelvin would just be amazing. Just right across the back of your truck window. Like, this is a statement. And then at the very end, it says Ford. Like, that's how much you want to pee on Ford. And has anyone ever just walked up and started peeing on a Ford? And the owner's like, what are you doing? It's okay, my name's Calvin. Like, okay, I guess I gotta let you do it. <laughs> I mean, I I had somebody pee on my car once, but he was really drunk, and it wasn't a statement on the manufacturer of my car or anything. And you're like, officer, but why'd you pull did you just pull me over to relieve yourself on my car? He's like, What? <laughs> huh. So, somehow we got here on our podcast about yes. video games. I'm not editing any of this out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, th there's an old hockey joke that uh, I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. And this is like, I we went to talk about hockey games and uh, discussion of stickers of <laughs> fixed to cars broke out. Speaking of the fight and a hockey game broke out. My wife had never seen hockey until I took her to a game, and I will never remember okay. or never forget the moment when the first fight broke out, because the local team here in town, the Spokane Chiefs, yeah, they love punching things, <laughs> and it was actually against Seattle, who okay. we, we it's our second most hated team. I don't After, know why. Tri who's the number one? Tri-Cities. Oh, yeah. Tri-Cities. They were just wailing on each other, and everyone's <laughs> cheering, and I looked over, and she just had her hands over her mouth because she didn't know what was going on because she always thought that it was just a joke that hockey players fought each other. And she's <laughs> just watching these people beat the crap out of each other, and I'm cheering because I'm having a good time. Um and now she really loves hockey, and when the fights break out, she is on her feet cheering. <laughs> I I played recreational hockey for about fifteen years, um, mostly pickup games, uh, and mostly mostly in parking lots, not on ice, but you know, either on foot or on rollerblades or whatever. And 
I've played football, I've played baseball, I've played basketball once or twice, and I've played hockey. And hockey's the only one where I ever, like, almost got into a fight. And it's just, I think because the teams are smaller and it's very physical, uh, it just, it's a lot more personal and it's, it makes you want to fight sometimes, <laughs> you know. Uh, the closest I ever got was actually... Not even like anything that happened in the game, but this guy got a breakaway and he was, was like one of the fastest guys we had. But because we were playing, uh, we were playing street hockey, so it was a ball. He had the ball. So because he had the ball, he's going a little bit slower. And I ran like crazy and I caught up to him and I managed to keep him from scoring. But he, since he was going full steam and I was in his way, he plowed right into our goalie and fell over and tripped. Well, they wanted to give me a tripping penalty for that. And I was so mad because I, it was so hard to catch this guy. Like, it was probably the fastest I've run in 10 years. And it was so much effort. I was just furious that they thought I cheated instead of, like, actually, like, made a good play for once. And I was so mad, like... The inside of my brain started to feel hot, and I'm like, I'm going to punch this guy. And uh, <laughs> somehow I didn't, which is good. It's probably probably the police would be called in this day and age. Yeah. In our pickup game, there was a fight. Cop's like, this is hockey, son. And then he starts <laughs> peeing on the side of an Oldsmobile. <laughs> we actually had the cops come to a few of our games, but one of them, we got a whole bunch of new players at once. I'm terrible with names, so we gave everybody nicknames until I got had time to learn everybody. Um, and then after the game, like two guys that had come in the same car together were just kind of horsing around play fighting. And we played in a parking lot that was a big lot, and the other side was shared with a bar. So we'd all park down at the other end so we wouldn't hit our cars while we were playing. We'd have a nice empty half a lot to play in. But then when we went to our cars, they were horsing around play fight, and somebody in the bar saw it called the cops. The cops took like 10 minutes to get there. In the meantime, they packed up their stuff and they left. And the cops just come up. They're like, who was fighting? We heard there was a fight. And we're like, you know, it didn't even occur to us at first because it was not a real fight. We're like, no, there wasn't. And then finally we're like, oh, yeah, they were just horsing around. It's no big deal. You know, they left together. It's fine. And the cops like, well, who was it? I need to know their names. And we all look at each other, and I'm like, does anybody know Thor or Blades' <laughs> last real names? <laughs> or real goalie? <laughs> like, it was Thor, Blades, and real goalie. What are their names? <laughs> and the cop's just like, real goalie? I'm like, yeah, he had pads and everything. <laughs> Crappy Avengers assemble. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man's like, real goalie. <laughs> <laughs> Go take care. Why is he called real goalie? He has pads and everything. I'm not real Iron Man. I got a real Iron Man suit and everything. <laughs> Hulk hands, come here. <laughs> Thor's just like, I'm God of Thunder and I enjoy playing hockey with these guys. What of it? <laughs> I'm Scandinavian. It's a big sport up there. We have ice and everything. Getting back on topic. Um, ice hockey, uh, you can pick your lineup. Did you play around with that at all? Or did you just kind of go with the default teams? Cause it's different for every country. I stuck with the default teams since we had quite a few games to go through and I really just wanted to get to NHL yeah. 94. If I'm being yeah. honest with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the key to that game. The ideal lineup that you want is three fat guys and a skinny guy. Uh, which sounds like the roster for uh, the pickup games that I played in most of the time. Uh, and I was not the skinny guy. Uh, but if you get the three fat guys, they can just throw everybody around. They got the big slap shot. You need the skinny guy to just kind of move the puck up ice quickly. Uh, but he's going to get annihilated as soon as it gets anywhere in the offensive zone. That's the lineup that you want. I had trouble judging when to slow the fast guy down and would just plow into the goalie. But they didn't have any sort of penalty stuff built into that. 
So I don't know if back in the NES days it was permitted to just plow over the goalie. No, no, that's discouraged. You know, it's it's international play, so that's a little different. Uh, but probably they'd want to discourage it more because, you know, if, if Team Soviet's player crashes into Team USA's goalie, next thing you know, nuclear warheads are f- being flung back and forth. So. <laughs> the ultimate hockey fight. Yeah. No, no one would actually know that happened because of hockey's popularity level. Yeah, that's true. You know, this country might go to war with Russia over something stupid, but it won't be hockey. They disrespected us on the hockey ice. What is this hockey? Air quotes. <laughs> it's a sport. Hmm. Okay. It's a football. <laughs> oh. Um. <clears throat> I mean, I think we have a pretty good list of where these are ranked. Um, if you've never played Face Off and all this talk of, well, I, well, no, we haven't actually talked about the video game hockey, but uh, you can actually go play that in Abandonware, um, right in your browser. Yeah, and it's a it's a decent little game. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I don't think the browser version has any of the music, which is kind of a shame. Uh, you can pull it up on YouTube and at least listen to it. It's good music for a 1989 PC game. Yeah. Um, there's there's some cool stuff in there. Um, it's five on five, which all the other games did too, but that was still kind of newish at the time. And uh, the goalie animations are really good. If you take a shot near the net, it'll switch to goal cam, which is like a like a third person perspective. And that's pretty neat. Um, one thing that's kind of weird about that is it's a separate looking screen, but the real game is still going on in the background. So you can be in shot cam. And if you take too long, somebody will just run up and cross check you and you won't even know it <laughs> until the game comes back on. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very well put together game. I was yeah. surprised that that was coming out at the same time as Ice Hockey and Blades of Steel because it, it was more on par with like the Genesis games. Yeah, yeah, the the PC was a little bit ahead back then. Um there was a football game, the very first Joe Montana football was on PC and it did some stuff that you didn't even see in Madden until a few years later. So that was kind of cool. But another probably my favorite discovery in Face Off is I'd played a couple dozen games and one time I got into a fight, and after I knocked the guy down, I was just jamming on the buttons. And you can actually dive on the defeated fighter's prone body and just start wailing on his face. <laughs> what? <somewhere. laughs> you know, like this helpless guy. So You haven't been disrespected enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I played one period of face-off. There were three fights, and twice the, the guy on the ice got pummeled on some more, so... It's kind of, even by the time that game came out, they sort of had gotten away from that level of violence in hockey. But it it's a good simulation of, like, the 70s Flyers. There we go. <clears throat> so, if you're enjoying the playoffs, uh, by the time this comes out... Yeah, we'll probably be around maybe the conference finals by then. Yeah, so go enjoy yourself some hockey. Maybe play some video game hockey. We've given you the definitive list that no one can ever argue again. (laughs) By law. Yes. We have that authority. Yes. I've been elected president of video games. Oh, Mr. President. Uh, (laughs) Yes. What's your foreign policy on video games? Don't get kidnapped by ninjas. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Which is how I got this job. The real president of video games got kidnapped by a ninja. <laughs> it's almost like a lead into next week. Who knows? Oh, is next week Bad Dudes Week? Next week is Bad Dudes Week. <laughs> yes. Poor President Ronnie. So, we are uh, Cartridge Based Radio, and you hung out this whole episode, so here's your reward. Cartridge based radio at gmail.com. Do you check that email? Because I don't. I do. 
We've gotten zero email. No, we got stuff from SoundCloud saying, "Hey, your your file posted." I'm like, "All right." <laughs> Google didn't even bother to send us the "Welcome to Gmail" email. <laughs> There's got to be some sort of podcast. These are a dime a dozen. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't gonna last six weeks. Oh, uh, what? I tried to email a link to myself and it bounced back. So we got that email. That was pretty good. <laughs> we are uh, high-level professionals here. Gmail's just like, we're going to just put this in the spam folder for you. You don't want to hear from these guys. I'm trying to email myself. Oh. Um, if you could go to iTunes and give us some stars. Uh, I don't know how Google Play does stars, but our ratings. Let's But maybe give us one over there. Uh, I think a nemesis bursts through the wall and just declares how many stars you get. <laughs> Four stars. <laughs> then shoots you in the face with a rocket launcher. We are Cartridge Space Radio. I'm Donald. And we will see you next week. Go pee on a Chrysler. When you've seen what I've seen, you just know that there's no point in wearing pants anymore. <laughs> Doing those fat rails. <laughs> I got the good coke from the 1800s with real cocaine in it. <laughs>